Okay, so this chapter is called uh, Molly, and we're on page 88. So now Jane and Ella and Clara and Joe Pittman are on the Clyde Plantation. And now Jane has to deal with Molly. Molly, page 88. We got there on Friday, next day Saturday. I heard that I was supposed to work in the big house. I hadn't worked in a house since I was a slave, but I work where they put me. What I couldn't figure out why I got the job as soon as I got there. How come some other women didn't have it? Some people like housework, make them feel more important. Housen always thought they was better than failed. And I asked Joe if he knowed why they'd give me the job. He said he didn't know either. Four day Monday morning, they uh, when they called Joe for work, I got up too. After he ate and left, I went over to the house. It was pitch black, but I didn't know what they wanted me for, so I went on anyhow. At the time, some of the kitchens used to set away from the house. That means the kitchen used to be, like, detached from the house, okay? Um, I didn't know where I was going to be working, so I went back to the kitchen and sat down on a barrel I saw in front of the door. I sat there and sat there. I sat there over an hour. Just as the sun was coming up, I saw a woman, a great big brown shin, I think that's really supposed to be brown skin, woman, walking across the yard toward me. It had been a heavy dew the night before, and her legs and feet were shining wet. She came up to the kitchen and looked for me sitting there. Well, she said, my name's Jane Pittman, I said. I didn't ask you that, she said. What do you want? I'm working here, I said. No, you ain't, she said. I don't need nobody spying on me. Spying, I said. Get out of my way before I lamb you up side the head, she said. She didn't give me time to move. She pushed me side the head and I fell on the ground. I brushed off my clothes and went in the kitchen where she was. She was lighting a fire in the fire half. When she got through, she looked at me standing there. You don't hear good, do you, she said. I was going to tell her I didn't want to be there in the first place. I'd rather be out in the field. But she grabbed me and pitched me back outside. I fell flat on my face, my hands covered with chicken and guinea stuff. I wiped my hands on the grass and went back to the kitchen. Molly was singing. She didn't even stop. She just grabbed me, still singing, and slammed me back out there. While I was sailing in the air, I was hoping I'd hit a clean spot. That was like hoping I didn't hit the ground. I wiped off my hands and clothes and went back in. Molly just stood there looking at me now. When she went back to the fire half, I got the broom and started sweeping. She jacked the broom out of my hand and threw it back in the corner. I kept out of her way after that, but I watched everything she did. After she got through cooking, she took the food to the house. I waited and waited for her to come back. When she didn't, I went over to the house too. The white people were sitting at the table eating. One white lady was just coming in the dining room. She was Mr. Clyde's daughter, Miss Clary. You must be Jane, she said. Yes, ma'am, I said. You'll take care of the children, Jane. I don't need nobody taking care of them children, Molly said. I can cook and take care of the children. Miss Clary didn't answer Molly. She looked at the side of my face and my forehead. Forehead. You heard anywhere else, she asked me. I touched my forehead. I had a knot up there the size of a marble. Miss Clary looked at the side of my face again. She was too much of a lady to tell me I had some guinea stuff there. I could see her mouth working like she wanted to say something. Then she pressed her lips tight. Then her nose worked a little bit like she was smelling something. All this time, she was looking straight in my eye. She wanted me to guess what she didn't want to tell me. One of the children at the table looked at me and pointed his finger. Ka ka, he said. Then everybody else at the table looked at me, and all of them burst out laughing. I touched the spot they was looking at, and it was there all right. Molly didn't want nobody else working in the house with her. Scared the person would take her place. She had been with the Clyde family ever since she was a young lady. She had been the cook. She had been the nurse. But now she was in her 60s, and they thought she was getting old and needed help. Molly didn't think she needed help. She was scared if she got help, the next thing the other person would be taken over. She had had it pretty easy all her life, and she wasn't going to let nobody take it from her. People tried to show Molly they didn't want nobody else to take her place. We love you. That's why we want people here to help you, they told her. But 
Molly didn't see it that way. And she made everybody who came there to work pay for it. She would spill hot ashes on the floor and swear you was trying to burn the house down. If she heard one of the children crying, she would swear you had done him something wrong. If you had to make a fire in the fire half or you had to go to bed, go make up a bed, she would find something wrong with it every time. She did everything to get rid of you. Then after she got you out, she couldn't take care of the work by herself. Molly tried to get rid of me just like she had got rid of all the others. She had told me lies on them till the white people had to let them go. When the white people found out she was telling lies and refused to fire the servants, Molly vexed them and vexed them till they quit themselves. When that didn't work on me, she went to the white people crying. She was quitting because they didn't love her no more. She said she had wet nurse Miss Clary, and now Miss Clary was the main one trying to put her out in the cold. They told Molly that wasn't true. They wanted her there. They wanted her there to rest of the rest of her life. Molly said they didn't want her. They wanted me. One day she told them she was leaving. They told her she couldn't leave. She'd been with them most of her life. She said, me or her, one of us had to go. Miss Clary said I wasn't going, but she didn't want Molly to go either. She told me herself that she loved Molly much as she loved anybody, and she wanted Molly to spend the rest of her life with them. Molly said, me or her, one had to go. I told them, let me go in the field. No, they said. Molly went to Derrida to get a job looking after an old lady there. I think for the first six months after Molly left, Miss Clary cried for Molly every day. She would go to Derrida every week to see Molly. If she didn't go to Molly, Molly came here to see her. They would sit in the front room and talk for hours. Molly would spend the night and go back the next day. I went to Miss Clary and told her I was quitting. She told me, excuse me, she told me if I did, she'd just get somebody else. I told her I didn't care what she did, I was quitting. I went back home and told Joe I had quit. Joe told me if I didn't get back up to that house, he was going to take a stick and run me back up there. Molly died four or five years after that. The doctor said she died from old age, but no, Molly died from a broken heart. They brought her back to the place and buried her in the family plot. One of the things I'll always regret, me and Molly never got to be friends. Maybe in the beyond, we will meet again, and I'll have a chance to tell her I never meant any harm. I think up there, she'll understand much better than she did down here. This is a funny chapter, you know, because you could almost like picture Molly picking up Jane and throwing her out. Um, but then, you know, it's also sad. You know, Molly, Molly had been at that house forever. She took care of Miss Clary as a baby, and now she's a grown woman. And... Um, you know, all of her happy days were there. She had an easy life there. She was well treated, um, but she didn't want the competition. And, and that was the thing. Jane was, Jane was good about not leaving like other people. And when Molly couldn't get her way, that's why Molly left. But you can tell that they still loved Molly because Miss Clary would go visit her and and uh, she'd come back and visit Miss Clary and spend the night. And so you knew that they, they really loved her. And I like this chapter because it does show us that not every white person in the South was, had bad intentions. Um, that, you know, there were, there were people who had these servants um, that they really loved, that they really cared about them. And so you can write about um, a time when you worked with somebody who was difficult. You could write about a time when somebody you loved had to leave, or maybe you had to leave them and how that felt, because I think then you might understand how some of these characters felt. Um, there wasn't really a whole lot of vocab in here, so that was easy. So just do your journal entry, and I'll see you back here for the next chapter.